Good afternoon and uh, welcome once again. Uh, this is our sixth uh, public lecture and um, we'll be talking about uh, watermelons in this lecture and uh, the uh, research and development project uh, I am uh, currently uh, involved in. Uh, watermelon is a flowering plant species of the Cucurbitaceae family. It is a scrambling and trailing vine-like plant. It is cultivated worldwide with more than 1,000 varieties. It is grown in favorable climates from tropical to temperate regions worldwide for its large edible fruit known as a berry. The sweet, juicy flesh is usually deep red and pink with many black seeds, although seedless varieties, to exist. Watermelons were domesticated in Northeast Africa and cultivated in Egypt by 2000 BC, although they were not the sweet modern variety. Wild watermelon are prehistoric and have been found in sites in Libya and others in Africa that dates to approximately 3500 BC. Sweet dessert watermelons are widespread across the Mediterranean and uh, other parts of the world during the Roman times from uh, 300 BC to about 400 AD. And uh, it was cultivated in India by the 7th century and also China by the 10th century. It was introduced to the New World and cultivated in Florida by the Spanish in the 1500s and in Massachusetts by 1600s. By 1650, it was cultivated in Peru, Brazil and Panama and was also introduced to the Pacific Islands by uh, explorers such as uh, Captain James Cook. Considerable uh, breeding effort has developed uh, disease-resistant varieties and uh, many cultivars are available that produce mature fruit within three months. Uh, in 2017, China produced about two-thirds of the world's total of 98 million tons of watermelons. And uh, just to look at the uh, classification of the watermelon, uh, the species name is uh, Citrullus lanatus in Latin. Uh, it belongs to the Kingdom Plantae or Kingdom of Plants, Division uh, Tracheophyte of the or the vascular plants, class angiosperms, or the uh, flowering plants, Cucurbitales, Cucurbitaceae, and genus Citrullus. <coughs> uh, New Zealand, uh, watermelon uh, of mainly two varieties are grown uh, locally uh, there may be several other uh, varieties grown uh, in a smaller scale family fun and uh, crimson sweet are the uh, main ones and sugar baby uh, sugar bell and some other ones uh, may be grown as well uh, while local growers produce a total of about 4800 tons a year of watermelons in New Zealand. 200 tons of watermelon is imported from Tonga and a further 2,000 tons from Australia. So uh, a total of about 6,000 tons of uh, watermelons being consumed in New Zealand every year. Uh, just to look at the uh, watermelon varieties that are currently uh, grown in New Zealand, 
On the left here is a family fund, berry or fruit. And on the right is a uh, crimson sweet fruit. So they look more or less the same. Um, and in the supermarkets, uh, most people probably uh, won't tell the difference. And uh, there's also some sugar baby and sugar bell uh, grown. Um, our research and development uh, project is mainly uh, on a variety I am developing called uh, Brown Magic. Uh, this variety I have developed uh, myself and I am applying to uh, the uh, New Zealand uh, registration authorities to register Brown Magic as a variety under my uh, name at the moment. Uh, the goal of uh, our watermelon breeding uh, is firstly to develop some new hybrids of melons that are unique to New Zealand and also uh, develop a better fruit, more compact, uh, with longer storage, nutrition, and uh, better cosmetic quality. Uh, also disease resistance, uh, shorter growing season, better vine growth and development. And uh, at the moment also working on uh, producing a seedless melon. Uh, the first goal is to uh, try and develop a uh, more compact plant uh, with a better looking fruit and more compact size uh, with the same nutrition and uh, sweetness uh, and also uh, very high in antioxidant uh, um, properties. Now this is the uh, brown magic uh, hybrid that I have developed uh, and you see here on the right uh, a picture of the plant itself it's a fairly compact uh, kind of plant it's not as big as uh, the parents and also the fruit is about uh, half the size of the parent fruits but uh, so far uh, we have managed to um, um, produce fruit that uh, may have the same quality um, in sweetness and also um, mature early and uh, with high antioxidant qualities. And this is a uh, cross section of the uh, brown magic uh, fruit. Uh, on the right, uh, it's got a very nice uh, red uh, uh, pinkish color, dark red pinkish color. And this is a close up of one of the fruit. And the seeds are actually uh, much smaller than uh, the parent seed, uh, actually medium sized uh, compared to the parent seeds. The fruits are, are smaller, uh, usually around two to four kilos, with uh, pink red flesh. Uh, the sweet uh, and also uh, full of trees and I think uh, they may have a high antioxidant levels according to some of the tests and these are just the variations of uh, how they look in the field uh, at various stages of growth uh, this is a young fruit here and this is uh, an older, older fruit uh, uh, on the right. Uh, again, this is a young fruit uh, on the left, and older fruit on the right. Uh, and a young fruit on the left, and uh, another young fruit on the right. It's probably the uh, effect of the uh, lighting that gives uh, the uh, 
skin color a bit of difference because with the brighter light like on the right some of the uh, smaller patterns might not appear uh, as well as on the left and uh, I have uh, tested uh, some fruit uh, for uh, longevity or shelf life and uh, on the left here is a fruit uh, that was um, stored for six months without losing any uh, cosmetic uh, quality uh, and on the right a fruit that was stored for six months last year without losing any of the cosmetic quality and uh, this is uh, an indication that uh, vitamin C, vitamin A and lycopene uh, content of the melons are very high because uh, these uh, compounds vitamin C, A and lycopene uh, have very very uh, strong antioxidant uh, action and they actually um, um, keep the melon um, um, I suppose in good condition over long periods because the antioxidant actually uh, prevents the uh, deterioration of uh, the fruit Uh, and just to extend that a bit further, uh, vitamin C, A and lycopene uh, are actually very, very uh, beneficial uh, compounds. And this is why uh, watermelon is a very, very good uh, uh, fruit and very popular with uh, uh, producers and customers worldwide. Uh, firstly, uh, the vitamin C, for example, um, helps fight against uh, common cold, may prevent uh, serious complications, uh, it benefits uh, um, the immune system and also the uh, heart and uh, a few other uh, benefits like uh, uh, preventing uh, eye problems and even uh, skin problems and uh, uh, even helping babies for example and these are um, found all over the internet if you look up the benefits of vitamin C uh, there's a huge uh, a list vitamin A the health benefits include uh, protection for the eyes uh, and age also lowers the uh, risk of uh, certain cancers and supports the uh, immune system and also uh, um, helps uh, skin health uh, it supports bone health and uh, overall uh, healthy growth and reproduction and if you look up uh, vitamin C, uh, vitamin A uh, on the internet there's quite a very very uh, long list of uh, benefits and lycopene as well there is a uh, strong antioxidant uh, action. Um, lycopenes uh, are very similar to uh, um, carotenoids, which are found in uh, fruits and vegetables with strong colors like uh, carrots, for example. And it helps with heart health. Uh, it lowers the risk of uh, uh, heart disease and uh, protects the skin and also uh, of uh, general protection against uh, uh, lifestyle diseases by uh, very strong antioxidant uh, action. Uh, let's have a look now at the uh, virus diseases uh, affecting watermelons. Um, in our research and development uh, watermelon plots uh, we did not experience any uh, disease appearing in the first two years 2019 and 2020 
but uh, diseases began to appear in 2021 and 2022. Not only virus, but also fungal disease. And this is very common uh, in areas where you uh, keep growing the same crops all the time, that um, after one or two years, uh, there'll be a lot of uh, disease uh, problems because of the same uh, uh, repeated cropping of a single species. And this is where crop rotation uh, usually helps um, to rotate uh, your uh, uh, crop with uh, different species so that uh, uh, disease and uh, various other pests uh, do not accumulate over the years. This is one of the uh, uh, most important viruses uh, on watermelon. Uh, and this virus actually uh, has uh, two names. Uh, as used in the literature, uh, papaya ring spot virus is one name, and the other one is watermelon mosaic virus 1, uh, abbreviated as uh, PRSV and WMV1. And as you can see, um, these two pictures, which is uh, of the same uh, fruit, in one uh, uh, paper, uh, it was called uh, papaya ring spot virus, and in another one, uh, it was called watermelon mosaic virus 1. And I have discussed the issue of um, uh, synonyms when I was talking about cucumber mosaic virus, that uh, sometimes uh, different people or different researchers would uh, use different names for the same virus. Um, I think also uh, uh, we should note here that papaya ring spot virus uh, is um, present in cucurbits in New Zealand uh, and uh, the source may be uh, from overseas and a lot of imports are not um, uh, tested for virus so uh, viruses are usually introduced in, into New Zealand unlike uh, insects. Uh, this is papaya ring spot virus on the left, on the purple plant here, and on the purple fruit. And uh, this is um, uh, watermelon mosaic virus one on uh, watermelon um, leaves. Uh, now let's have a look at the um, disease uh, resistance uh, with uh, reference to watermelon mosaic virus. Um, Now on the picture uh, on the left is a um, uh, brown magic melon with just a single uh, virus um, uh, ring. And on, on the right, uh, it's another hybrid uh, with uh, lots and lots of virus rings which is a severe response to the uh, virus infection. Uh, but on the left, uh, the response to the virus is uh, very uh, limited. So it is a sign that the plant is uh, resistant to the virus. And uh, also, uh, this plant here did not uh, show any virus symptoms on the leaves. Uh, and also the plant on the right, it didn't show any uh, virus symptom on the leaves. It was only the, the fruits that uh, showed the uh, symptom of the virus. And uh, here they are. Um, 
The plant on the left here shows the rings on the fruit. Uh, and also uh, the plant on the right here. Uh, these two um, are hybrids of uh, um, slightly different coloration on the skin. But notice that the leaves do not have any uh, virus symptoms on the leaves. Whereas the fruits are showing uh, the rings. And uh, uh, this is an indication that there is a degree of resistance uh, to the virus. And again here, uh, these are two different hybrids. Uh, it's just one ring on this hybrid on the left. And just uh, a few rings on the hybrid on the right. Uh, but uh, look closely at the ring. It's got a very, very strong uh, scab uh, wound reaction uh, by producing cork uh, in response to the virus uh, presence. In uh, susceptible varieties, uh, this ring uh, develops into a water-soaked uh, rotting uh, mess. But uh, in this one here, uh, the cork and the scab wound reaction somehow uh, contains the uh, virus uh, infection so that uh, it does not really uh, progress any further. And like the, the fruit on the right, there's a very, very strong cork uh, uh, wound reaction on the skin. Uh, and you'll notice if you um, wound any plant, there is a very strong uh, wound reaction with cork developing over the wound. It's a kind of protection. And this is what's happening here. An uh, indication that uh, there is a very strong uh, virus resistance. Uh, and also the, the leaves, uh, like the plants I showed you before, the leaves did not show any virus uh, symptom at all. The plant looked very healthy. It's only the fruits that showed a few rings on them. And again here, uh, the fruit on the right has got uh, some very faint rings on the skin. But the fruit itself is already mature and the plant itself didn't show any uh, symptoms on the leaves. But uh, uh, obviously uh, uh, there is virus infection, but it's not developing any further. Uh, it just, uh, uh, like this ring here is only half developed and uh, that one there is only half developed. And this one here, uh, it's only half developed. So uh, it's obviously uh, showing some kind of resistance by the plant to the virus uh, uh, ring development as shown you in the very first picture, which was very, very severe uh, uh, ring spots on the fruit. But um, on those fruits here in the hybrids that I'm working with, uh, they seem to have a very, very uh, strong reaction against the uh, ring spot virus. Uh, of course, there is uh, quite a lot of work to be done uh, on uh, virus resistance. Um, there are a few things that need to be checked, like uh, seed transmission, uh, yield loss, eating quality, marketability, uh, like cosmetic quality, for example, uh, shelf life, transmission of the virus in the field. Uh, obviously, to date, uh, there doesn't seem to be uh, much uh, transmission in the field because uh, all the plants look healthy, uh, although uh, fruits uh, do have uh, the rings on them. And uh, it's not quite clear whether this uh, resistance can be used uh, is a uh, uh, production tool like uh, uh, control of viruses, for example, but something uh, to be looked at uh, uh, using uh, more technology. 
and also uh, the virus need to be uh, DNA fingerprinted uh, as well as the plants. We need to start uh, looking at uh, genetic makeup uh, and even perhaps uh, finding out uh, what is the genetic basis for the resistance. Maybe from the parents or maybe it's something uh, that developed after uh, is worth looking at. And the uh, last goal, or uh, uh, the current uh, major project that I'm working on, is uh, developing seedless melons. Uh, developing seedless melons uh, involves, uh, firstly, uh, the um, production of a tetraploid. Uh, most uh, watermelons are diploids, so they have two sets of chromosomes. And uh, what you need to do is to induce uh, the diploid to produce an extra set of uh, chromosomes, or two extra sets of chromosomes. So uh, a uh, diploid then becomes a tetraploid with four sets of chromosomes. And uh, in this experiment, I first started off by uh, treating the seeds with uh, some chemicals. And uh, after uh, the treatment, the seeds were then planted. And the seedlings uh, selected for uh, tetraploid uh, characteristics, uh, which is mainly the size of the cotyledons. And uh, then these uh, tetraploid seedlings are planted with diploids and uh, attempt to cross them and then assess the uh, plant parameters uh, once they, they start fruiting, uh, like the uh, size of the leaves, the flowers, and uh, so on. And on the right here are the seedlings. And um, these uh, ones with the very large uh, cotyledons, uh, I had compared them with uh, the normal ones and they seem to be uh, much bigger. And so these were selected and planted. And one of the first things I noticed was that uh, they have very, very uh, long nodes or long inner nodes. From one cluster of leaves to the next, uh, they seem to have a very, very long internode. And also the comparison of the leaves. Now this is a leaf from a tetraploid, and this is a leaf from a diploid. And you can see uh, there is obviously a very, very big uh, difference in size. Uh, the tetraploid uh, is uh, like four or five times bigger than the diploid. And uh, obviously uh, something is going on there. The picture here on the left is uh, how the uh, tetraploid uh, leaves look on the plant. They look uh, very, very big and uh, very, very vigorous and very, very green. And uh, also measuring the flowers, the size of the flowers on the uh, tetraploids were obviously much, much bigger than the flowers on the diploids. Uh, in some cases, almost double the size. And these are the male flowers. The male flowers of the uh, Tetraploids were much, much bigger than the male flowers of the uh, diploids. And also the seeds. Uh, there were uh, three lines of uh, tetraploids that uh, I was working with. And comparing these seeds uh, to the normal uh, brown magic diploid seeds, the tetraploid uh, seeds were all bigger. The biggest one was 44% bigger 
and the medium uh, seeds were four percent bigger, and the smallest seeds were two percent bigger than the uh, normal seeds of the prime magic. So uh, very very interesting. Not only they had bigger leaves, bigger cotyledons, they also had uh, bigger flowers and bigger seeds. And obviously uh, there is something going on uh, because that's how you uh, differentiate uh, between uh, tetraploids and diploids by the size of uh, leaves and flowers and seeds and uh, uh, even the um, um, weight and in this case the differentiation was made uh, not only with the size but also the weight of the seeds and this is how the uh, uh, tetraploidy was determined um, firstly um, tetraploid watermelon plants which were treated with chemicals had uh, bigger cotyledons they had uh, bigger leaves they had bigger flowers and they had bigger seeds and uh, very very obvious that uh, the experiment was a success uh, now that was the first step is uh, producing the uh, tetraploid uh, melon from uh, diploids and the second step was the uh, crossing of the tetraploids and the diploids and uh, this would produce triploids or melons with uh, three sets of uh, chromosomes and uh, the final step uh, is uh, growing the triploid melons and uh, uh, they should produce seedless uh, fruit or seedless melons. And this is how it would look. Uh, this is the uh, uh, watermelon uh, with seed on the left and uh, watermelon with no seed on the right. So this is the objective of the uh, project is to develop a watermelon in New Zealand which is seedless like this one on the right here and the whole idea is to uh, have a quality uh, fruit with no seeds uh, uh, for sale in the New Zealand market and uh, hopefully uh, we might get to that stage in the ne next year or two Uh, one of the obvious uh, issues that need to be uh, sorted out uh, is firstly the uh, ownership of the uh, research because it's very very easy for people to just steal your seeds and uh, claim that uh, they had developed a hybrid and not you and one of the uh, things you can do is uh, actually um, develop some DNA uh, fingerprinting uh, technology which uh, will identify your hybrid varieties as yours and uh, anyone else who tries to steal it will have to prove it uh, using uh, DNA technology which uh, would prove that uh, the seeds had come from you and uh, which is a good idea uh, it will protect the plant breeder from uh, the thieves who uh, try and steal their work uh, with our hybrid uh, brown magic we have uh, made application in New Zealand and uh, there are people who have stolen some of our seeds but uh, I'm confident that we can uh, sort this out because uh, we have a lot of uh, technology we can use and also uh, we have a lot more information than the thieves and uh, we can prove that uh, hybrids belong to us or belong to me because I am the plant breeder 
uh, and uh, this DNA technology is already available. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, putting the technology together and uh, using it. Uh, there are a lot of uh, hybrid uh, melons in our program and uh, of course uh, as already mentioned the idea is to develop uh, watermelons that are unique to New Zealand because uh, so far New Zealand does not have its own uh, watermelon varieties all the watermelons grown in New Zealand uh, are brought in a seed from overseas but uh, it would be nice to have uh, uh, some that are that were developed locally. Uh, this is uh, another one I'm working on. Uh, I call this one uh, Long Magic. Uh, the other one is Brown Magic, which is uh, a short, uh, stubby fruit. But this one here, the Long Magic, is uh, it's got a longer fruit and uh, very very similar but uh, it's just uh, uh, bigger and longer than the uh, brown magic and as you can see the leaves are very uh, uh, vigorous very green and uh, looks like a very very um, uh, healthy hybrid and this is another one uh, which is uh, also very similar to uh, uh, the Long Magic. This one here I call uh, Rainbow Favorite. And uh, it's not as uh, long as the um, Long Magic uh, or as short as the Brown Magic. Um, this one is like uh, a medium sized one. And uh, it's also got very dark uh, uh, skin with uh, very faint uh, coloration um, not uh, as uh, uh, clear as the coloration and uh, pattern on the uh, long magic uh, and uh, this is just the uh, information uh, context here for people who uh, want to know more about uh, our project or my project, uh, the phone number here in the uh, email. Uh, if you want to ask some questions or uh, get involved, because I have uh, tried to involve some people in the past and I gave them some seeds and they had uh, disappeared with the seeds. And, uh, that's unfortunate because, uh, I mean, the science uh, is uh, very important, but unfortunately, unfortunately those people don't really uh, understand that uh, uh, an experiment is a very, very important way of uh, finding out information about these hybrids. But uh, because the hybrid is very near, they decided decided to uh, disappear with it and grow it on their own somewhere in uh, New Zealand or some other part of the world. And uh, very sad, I mean, uh, very sad. Um, <clears throat> uh, this is my uh, website here for people who want to uh, have a look uh, themselves. You can just uh, log into my um, website, uh, and uh, this page has a uh, um, few pictures of some some of the hybrids uh, in the program, and uh, some of them are very very promising, uh, like Brown Magic, for example. Uh, it's got a few um, uh, desirable uh, characteristics, like uh, disease resistance. Uh, very uh, compact uh, growth in a small size, which is um, good for uh, marketing reasons. Uh, it's also got uh, good uh, shelf life and uh, the taste is uh, also good. So um, it, it might be a, a good uh, melon for uh, uh, marketing in the future. 
uh, and uh, thank you for watching. Uh, our next talk will be on uh, vanilla viruses. And uh, this uh, work on uh, watermelon is ongoing. So uh, we might have uh, another lecture on the watermelon uh, project uh, in the future when we get uh, more information and have some uh, seedless uh, watermelons uh, for display.